Okay, welcome back to the shop. So this is going to be a multi-part series of building this catamaran stand-up paddle board. So this is the board. This is the 12 foot long version and depending on how things go, there might be a longer and bigger version later down the line. But 12 feet long and you can see two separate hulls connected by a deck. And we're gonna build this whole thing step by step. It's a pretty, should be a relatively straightforward build. Um, so we'll see how many different videos end up making this video. It'll probably end up being about three different videos, but we'll see. So yeah, this is just a quick overview of what we are building, just so you have a sense as we go along here. So uh, pretty straightforward, just a couple of holes connected with a deck. And the way we're going to be doing this is pretty much we are going to first build both hulls and then deck. We're gonna build the centerpiece, glue them together, uh, add a little bit of reinforcements, and then we're going to end the build by installing a deck onto the surface of this boat or paddleboard. It can vary depending on what you want. And then later on after the initial board is built, we'll get into the potential add-ons which would be a motor mount in the back a kind of seat slash platform also that can get put into the back so you can really add on a whole whole lot of things here so we're going to get started with it and i just wanted to quickly show you guys the model uh, because this is what the foam hull pieces are cut out of and this is just going to give us a good sense as to what we are building as we go so right here is the entire board in its pieces. So this is how it would arrive as a kit. We have basically on, on this side stacked up is the bottom portions of the hulls. And then here are the top portions. Uh, we'll get into how these all fit together. And then right in here is the deck that holds the two hulls together. So these all come pretty close to being able to glue and assemble together. There's just a couple things that we might want to do. For example, uh, this little bit of foam right here, we might want to sand down and there's a little bit of edge on the inside here. We just want to remove any sort of edges like that before we get into gluing. So a helpful thing when gluing up the hulls is just to have a flat area. So I know this floor is pretty flat, so that's definitely gonna help us glue up a flat and true hull in the end. So find a flat area and just kind of lay things out. So you can see we have, this is one pontoon just kind of laid out here. So we, you can see we have those solid bottom pieces which make up the hull on the left hand side and then closer in here these are those thin strips these make up the top side of the hull so to help orientate things the back sides of the hulls are fatter and not as pointy as the front so looking here towards the back this side or this end of the pontoon is definitely larger and more chunky than the front so that's an easy way to distinguish that and then the back pieces as well you can see that these are not as sharp and pointy as they would be up front and so for example zooming in here you can see that this one on the left is a lot is a lot sharper and more pointy and so that forms the front of the hulls and then this one back here is more blunt and not as defined and sharp and so this is towards the back of the hull so that's how you just distinguish which is which and so you basically just match them up uh, front to back get everything lined up and that's how you know which goes in the front and which goes in the back so the center pieces as well these are symmetric so it doesn't really matter as to which way they go just obviously they need to be curved in the right direction but those are symmetric as well so as mentioned before before we get to gluing the pieces together we want to make sure that the mating surfaces are relatively clean so you can see there's a little bit of a lip here so we want to remove that and the easiest way is just this is some 40 grit sandpaper and we're just going to lightly pass over that 
and now it's flush and ready to go. So we're gonna look at all the mating surfaces, the edges as well, and just make sure that there's nothing like that that's going to stick out in the way. All right, so our method of gluing this hull together is to first glue these two sections together as one, and then we're going to stack them on top of each other and glue those down together. So when it comes to gluing the hull pieces together, there's really two ways you can do it. One is to use thickened epoxy, and I'll show you guys an example as to how you do that. That will, of course, take longer to do because epoxy takes a, a while to cure. Or you can hot glue the pieces together. And so the whole point of this is we're pretty much just gluing the hull together so that it can hold itself in one piece. And then we're going to shape it into its final shape, which will be relatively easy to do and then fill the seams and then fiberglass the hull. So the fiberglass and then seam filling, sort of, but mostly through the fiberglass is where this thing is gonna get its strength from. So using something like hot glue to get the thing pieced together and held together initially is more than adequate. There won't be any issues there. So depending on what you have on hand, you can either use a thickened epoxy or the hot glue. And I'm gonna show how to use the thickened epoxy right now. Okay, so ex for example, say we're trying to glue these two pieces together right here. So these could be the top rail pieces of the hull. So if we're using thickened epoxy, really the only thing you wanna watch out for is probably less is more in a, in a job like this. But we wanna avoid getting um, epoxy to squeeze out of the edges and the seams because that's just going to make it harder to shape the hull nice and smooth later down the road. So really we just wanna put a glob right in the center and make sure that it's not squeezing out on the edges. So here is some thickened epoxy and you can see we added filler so it's not moving off the stick. It's probably as thick if not a little bit thicker than peanut butter. And so again, less would be more on a job like this. And we're just going to put a little bit in the towards the center, avoid those outside edges. And then those would be lightly pressed together so that they have good contact, but we're not getting any squeeze out of the edges. So you can glue it together like that if you don't want to go the hot glue route. So just as we just saw with the thickened epoxy, say you were gluing these two hull sections together, it's pretty much the same thing. We're just going to put some epoxy kind of down the center here and avoid those edges and then just make sure that they're touching and uh, so nothing squeezing out of the edges. Again, we're, we're pretty much just looking to get the whole thing stuck together. We don't need a perfect bond. We don't need a really strong joint here. Again, we're pretty much just taking these whole pieces and fitting it together like a puzzle because once we smooth it out and we glass it and we add the deck on, that's where it's gonna form one hard uh, hull piece and which would be more than strong enough for what you need. So really just the key is to avoid getting glue towards the edges and the same applies for the hot glue. So with the hot glue, we're just gonna just put a little bit in the center and just get contact avoid squeeze out and just let the whole thing cool down and take shape one piece at a time. And as mentioned, I'm going to start by first gluing these three whole sections together. And then I'm going to glue the other skinny top side whole sections together. And then I'm going to fit the two halves together. And then I'm just going to repeat the same process with the next hull. And one quick little tip here. So if we're going with the hot glue method, we don't want the hot glue to be too hot. Uh, cause there is a, if it is too hot, it does melt the foam and we don't want that obviously. So just make sure your hot glue isn't, don't leave the hot glue gun running for like 20 minutes straight because that, then that hot glue will be a little bit too hot. We just want to moderate the temperature and have it pretty much just as long as it's hot enough to kind of come out of the hot glue gun, that's pretty much where you want it to be. So. so one other thing real quick here is the importance of having a flat surface to work off of is these joints will, they should line up pretty close, but you can see there's obviously still a gap here. And we want to make sure that this is glued in reference to the floor and not the joints 
if that makes sense. So just make sure that things are flat on the floor surface. Uh, so if you have a gap, that's fine. And it, honestly, it's expected because we are going to fill these in before we fiberglass them. So don't concern yourself too much with getting these to fit perfectly and then avoiding having the hull be flat. It's more important to have it flat. And if you end up with a, a wider gap, it's no issue because we are going to fill that in later. So mind the gaps and make sure that we are flat in reference to the floor. Okay, so the main bottom hull sections are glued together. And as those cool down, I'm going to glue together the top side sections. And so probably best to start with one end or the other and first match the mating sides at each end. Probably glue that first and then glue the other one on the other side and then we'll glue those center pieces in together to, to stick the whole thing as one piece. All right, so quickly just to show, we don't really need that much and I'm just avoiding the edges. So I'm just gonna get some glue right here in the center and then stick it together. And so again, do our best to line things up the best we can. It's pretty easy to tell where things should go. And if it's not perfect, no worries because we are gonna give this thing a final shape. And so if we misalign something or something doesn't match up quite perfectly, we can shape that out and make it seem seamless. All right, so we have these two pieces glued up. And uh, just one thing to keep in mind, give, give it more time than you think to cool because it is foam. So it's a great insulator and it can keep that hot glue warm for longer than you would think. So just wait a little bit extra before you start moving things around. And when you do start moving things around, remember, we're just pretty much getting this thing to hold itself together. So just be gentle with it, uh, especially because it's such a long, thin piece. So be gentle and mindful as we move these things to fit together. All right, so I just took the bottom half and I've placed it onto the top half here and everything's fitting really well. And so usually what you'll find is that an edge here might be sticking out by a half inch or so, but you can, under the weight of the top portion, you can usually just kind of press it into perfect alignment. And so going all the way down the hall, you can see it's kind of sticking out a little bit here. And at, in so there, you can see I, I got it to stick a bit more flush there. And so you can kind of just gently move things around and we're gonna to wanna to line up the edges the best we can. So you can see this isn't perfectly lined up, obviously, but again, when we get into the final shaping, we need to remove these, these mill marks anyways. And so we're going to be kind of sanding and gently reshaping this area and it'll take out any of the misalignments that we have. We obviously want to blunt the tip a little bit because we don't want a really sharp tip be easy to damage when the boat's fully done. So just kind of generally get a feel for how things are laid out and try to get things lined up as best as possible. Okay, so now we're going to be gluing the two halves together now that we have them lined up in a good area. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm first just gonna start by gluing the front end and then I'm going to glue the back end and then I'm gonna go along the sides and glue those uh, just kind of inch by inch as I go along, just to make sure that things stay lined up exactly where I want them. So the first bit is I'm just going to lift this up, get some glue in there. Again, not too much, avoid the edges, and then come and place this down. Again, not pushing too hard and I'm just going to hold that in place a little bit as that glue sets up. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing down the other end. Okay, so after having tacked down both the front and the back ends of the boat, I was able to carefully roll it over. And so you can see now that we have the top rail sections glued on both ends and you can see that you can still move them around a bit. And so, that was the whole point of gluing the ends first because now I'm just going to gently lift up 
the inside piece and then I'm able to get some glue underneath. And so working from the inside of the boat as opposed to the outside, I'm just going to glue, lift up, glue, lift up, glue every few inches down the whole side of the boat. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And that allows us to get glue pretty much everywhere and ensure that the outside edges line up perfectly. So that's how I'm gonna go down and glue the two halves together. All right, so you can see here, I'm able to lift this piece up a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, plenty of room to get the hot glue nozzle underneath there and allow some glue to get in. And then I'm going to line up the outside edges, make sure that they are right where I want them to be and then just kind of press and hold as that glue sets up. And so that's how we're gonna get these rails lined up really nicely going down the whole side of the boat. All right guys, so you can see we have the hull now finally all glued together. And once it's all fit together, it's got a lot more strength and we're able to move it around a lot easier. So you can see the whole point of that was just to get the thing fitted together and try to line those seams up the best we can. There will be some imperfections like you can see here but that's all gonna be sanded out and smoothed out anyways because we need to take out these mill marks. And at the same time that we're doing that, we're just gonna nicely kind of round all the edges, smooth out any imperfections, smooth out the front end of the boat, and then also do the same in the back. So we're just gonna be doing that with sandpaper. Very simple to do, very easy. And so with one hole put together, obviously glue up the next hole as well because it's the same exact process. Uh, for the majority of this video, or at least while we're building the holes, I'll pretty much just be doing one just to show you because it's literally the same process. Okay, so you can see we have the second hull glued up and I just placed the, uh, the deck structure in the middle just to get an idea. So it fits pretty nicely with the edges in there and so when it comes time to bond we'll make sure that that fits really well and then that'll hold the two holes together and so this is towards the front end here and then aft right about here and so this gives you a really good idea i mean we saw it on the model but uh just a few minutes later we now have it kind of full sized out and again this needs to be sanded and smoothed out and then we're going to glass this whole thing together and then put in the center part. And so I'm sure people are starting to now wonder what the deck is going to be and that's kind of up to you. I'm going to be using this quarter inch plywood right here and that's more than enough. I'm really trying to keep this whole build relatively lightweight so it's easy to move around, get on roofs of cars. So I'm going to be using this quarter inch stuff it's definitely more than what's needed. I, I probably wouldn't go much thinner than quarter inch, uh, but we'll get to the deck uh, when we get there. And the deck will be towards the very end of the build. It'll be the last thing we install. So for now, we don't really have to worry about that, but that is what is going to pretty much cap off the entire top side of this boat, just so you guys know in advance. Okay, so you can see what the next step is going to be. We have a sanded and smoothed out hull here, and then this is one before that work is done. So we're basically just gonna knock down the lines, refine the shape, and get it down to something looking nice like this. So it's a pretty quick and easy job, and really all you need is, I just literally use, uh, sand, I use these two pieces of sandpaper, and that's it. I mean, if you have a orbital sander, you can use that, but you don't really need it and um, it can also because it removes foam so fast you can it's more easy to mess up with any sort of power sander so uh, the simplest way is definitely the safest way in this case and so this is 40 grit sandpaper and so obviously we're going to be using the 40 grit first and it's great because that you can just by holding it in your hand like this you can conform to the curves of the hull and so you really get a, a pretty decently fared shape just by using this and so i first start using this knock down pretty much all the all the high spots and rough edges 
And then after that 40 grit, I'll move up to a 120 grit and that just smooths things out a bit more and it makes uh, the first layer of fiberglass go on easier with less resin. So the smoother it is, the more, the less resin you use. And I, I don't really find it necessary to go higher than 120 grit. So we're gonna just start with the 40 and then bump up to the 120. So you can see the, the process is, is fairly quick, even by hand here. So just in a few seconds, you can see that that area right there completely smoothed out. And so that's a whole idea. We're just gonna go around the entire hull like this and remove those uh, marks from the machine that cuts the foam out. So just smoothing everything out down on the tips. We're gonna smooth that out as well. And so you can kind of see this little bit of a gap here where those two halves met. They uh, don't meet up perfectly obviously and so at this stage if, as you just gently sand through you'll eventually get rid of that mark as you sand the whole thing down and so you just want to keep everything even as you go and uh, areas like that will disappear and so up here towards the very front you can see i kind of just sanded the whole thing down um, and made it not as sharp so it's pretty much just like a blunt round edge and that's what I'm looking for here. It's just going to be easier to fiberglass over and also uh, a bit stronger and resistant to light impacts. You know, if this was really sharp and pointy, it would just be probably getting damaged all the time. So just dull this out a little bit, round it over and keep in mind, I, I mean, when you're done, put the two holes next to each other and just try to keep the shape as similar as possible. It's pretty easy to do just by eye. Okay, so both the holes are now smoothed down. The ends are symmetric. Uh, they're about the same length, so all that is taken care of. And so the next step, what we're going to be doing is filling in these gaps that we left uh, pretty much all over the entire hull. So there are the gaps into these big sections here, and then the gaps going down the length of the hull as well. And so you can see right here, we have a little bit of a rough patch. And so I didn't want to sand that out because then we'd have a bit of a divot right here. So as we fill these seams, I'm just going to fill that in as well. And so if you have little imperfections like that, leave them until you get to the fill stage and that'll take care of those very nicely. So when we fill in these seams, again, we're going to be mixing up some thickened epoxy and pretty much just using a little squeegee pretty much to jam it down and then fill all these seams going around the entire hull. So we're going to do that on both both sides here because we can't fiberglass over a gap like that. It'll just cause all sorts of problems, let alone it's probably not um, great structurally. So we're going to fill in all the gaps and then make sure they're nice and smooth. We won't even have to sand them after we fill them and then we'll be able to glass these hulls up. All right, so I have thickened epoxy here, and this is this is thick, like it's not gonna move at all, and that's what we want. We want it to go into that joint and then stay right where it is. So really, uh, the uh, cheap squeegee, you can see you can reuse them a lot if you just wipe the blade clean when you're done. So we're gonna use this to clean everything up. And I'll just show you this area right here, just because it has both a seam and a imperfection. So this is pretty much all you're gonna run into when you do this step. So I pretty much will just use a lot more than you have to and just kind of get it along the seam. And then you come down with your squeegee. And so this will smooth it and then it will also jam the epoxy into those areas so you can see that joint is now nicely full a little bit more right here and you can come back and reapply if you need it but if you're careful with the squeegee you can get a very very clean perfect edge so that is now completely full and smooth and so once we glass over this you won't be able to feel a any sort of gap whatsoever it's completely full so i'm going to go around the whole 
boat and get every seam that's open and make sure that it's nicely and nice and filled. All right, so these seams are nicely filled, pretty smooth as is. So once this stuff fully cures, I probably will just take the 120 sandpaper and just very, very lightly scuff over it just to knock off any uh, particles that might have gotten stuck around those areas. But that's pretty much all I'm gonna have to do before finally glassing the hulls. So just double check, make sure all the seams are nice and filled in and then let those cure up.